So I've been asked to do a video on the broker that I use, on the app that I use to trade and to buy things, buy financial products to make my investments. Well, it's not exactly an app, it's actually a broker. I will talk more about why I chose a broker over apps. Just know for now that I use a broker, a proper broker, and that's interactive brokers. Hey, it's Dario and this is DVD Finance, a platform where we can share our best tips and tools when it comes to trading, investing, or finance in general. And if you love the subject, please consider subscribing. So in this video, I would like to show you a tutorial on how to use the TWS, especially the TWS classic version. So uh, let's see how the Trader Workstation works because it seems kind of complicated. Uh, it seems hard to understand. So le let's see how to use it and let's see how to personalize it first of all. So in the Trader Workstation, we have two uh, ways to use it. So there is the classic way, the TWS classic and then there is the TWS or TWS uh, mosaic I don't like the mosaic version I have it here I have my setup here but I don't like it because it's mainly used for analysis so if I have to analyze the chart uh, if I have to analyze in deep uh, a stock to understand if I want to buy it or not on a technical basis uh, or I have to analyze news and all that I will use it but since I'm not a day trader I don't need to use this stuff on the Trader Workstation, I have other platforms that do this job much better because as you can see, this platform is not that great for analysis. It's very messy, complicated, and I don't like it. That's it. So let's use the TWS classic version, which is this. As you can see, it presents itself more or less like an Excel sheet, okay? So we have uh, certain information about our orders and about the financial underlying. So the stocks, for example. First of all, we have to personalize the TWS classic. It doesn't come like this. This is how I personally use it, but uh, let's see how to personalize it. First of all, let's add a new quote monitor page. Uh, so a new sheet, if you will. So just click on the plus sign here. Let's name the page. Uh, I will name it stocks two because I already have one stock. Uh, order reference doesn't matter too much. Uh, just leave it blank. Here for the layout, you can choose many layouts, uh, but let's just choose the default one. And we are going to modify the default one. So let's click okay and a new page has been added. Now, um, this page is, as I said before, uh, is my page, is how I personalized it, you will not have the same. So how do we personalize it? First of all, we need to understand that there are two rows. So we have two rows of information. One, it's about the stock or the underlying uh, asset. And the other one, it's about the order that we are inputting in the machine. So let's see how to modify these columns. So let's right click on the column. Let's go customize layout and let's customize the default layout. Uh, so you can choose here the layout that you want to customize, just customize the, the default one. That's, that's how I did it. You can choose here to uh, add or remove certain information. These are the information that I put. As I said before, you will not have the same ones. I suggest you add these ones because they are quite useful. To add them, you just search for them here. You can search for them uh, by clicking and looking through the, the whole list, or you can even input here the name. I don't know what this is, don't ask me, but let's see, let's say I want to add this. So I click this, I click add. Now I have it, I could apply an okay and it would appear, but I don't want it anymore. So let's just remove it. So this is how I add and remove. If you want to switch uh, the columns, so you want to move the columns from one side to the other, you can simply go here and drag them so like this, or uh, you can even click here, these arrows. If you click the upper arrow, you will move it on the left side. If you click the down arrow, you will move it to the right. Now, this is the market data columns. So the columns that show the data of the market or the financial asset. But we also need information from our order. So let's switch to the order columns. And here we see the information for the order, for the specific order that we are going to put. So the buy order or the sell order. I will show you later what I mean. For, for now, just know that you will add here information. And uh, this is the information that I added. As I said before, I suggest you add the same, uh, but you don't need to, you can add whatever you want. As before we said, uh, you can choose the information that you want to add from the list directly, or just uh, input the name of the thing you want to add and then add it or remove it. 
As before, you can move the columns like this, or you can move the columns clicking the upper arrow or the downside arrow. Then, uh, if you want to change the color of the columns to maybe see the, the information a little bit better, you just click configure, you click of course on the information that you want to change the color of, you click configure, and you change it here or you go here configure and you change it here that's what i did i changed it in the market data columns then if you're uh, okay with the color with the text and all that you just click okay if you're okay with the information that you added you just apply and okay so now that we added the columns that we want to have and the information that we need to trade and to monitor our orders we can start putting orders so first of all we need to put the ticker symbol or the name of the stock that you want to trade or that you want to exchange in general so let's just say we want to exchange apple so we go aapl we click uh, on the keyboard we click enter and then a bunch of things come out here as you can see here we have many uh, exchanges okay so we have the ebs the maxi and the nasdaq for example here we know we want apple we want apple inc and we want it from uh, the nasdaq so listed on the Nasdaq. So what we are going to do at this point is choose the financial product. So either stock, futures, options, warrants, structure products, combinations or CFDs. Let's just choose the stock and we want the stock with the smart version, which means that he is going to direct us. So the platform is going to direct us to the best uh, exchange or the best route to buy the product. So to buy the stock. So let's just click here. And as you can see, the company has been added to our list, uh, just as if it was an Excel sheet. OK, as you can see here, we have the information about the company. So we have the last price. We have the change of the day. We have another change in price this time, not in percentage, shortable shares, fee rate, rebate rate, and so on and so on. As you can see, the, this row here, this upper row on the column is about the financial product here, okay, the stock or the company, right? So now what do we do? At this point, we didn't put an order. We just put the company here. We can have uh, even a list of things. You could do a watch list if you wish, okay? You can put here, many others many other things uh, okay so these are not orders these are these are just monitor things okay so you can monitor the company like this but let's say now we want to add an order we want to buy apple we want to buy some shares of apple so to buy some shares of apple you just right click on the name of apple so on the ticker and then you choose buy as you can see here you can buy sell or make a complex position we will not talk about complex positions in this video because i wanted to keep it, i want to keep it as simple as possible but you could do that as well before pressing buy what i want to show you is also that you have here the chart we're going to use the chart a little bit later because we will use it to check our position to check our order and to check our prices but for now let's click buy so as you can see here it opens the window here for the order to input the order you don't have to modify anything here it's okay we can modify it when it's in the row uh, but you could do this as well here let's just put the price for now because you cannot leave it blank uh, for the rest let's just leave it like this we will modify it once it's in the row because it's a little bit easier in my opinion so let's just accept for now and do not transmit just accept transmitting means you put the order in the in the system uh, accepting just means you put it in the row to review it now we can actually review the order and go uh, in a row i like it better like this so you just check the account you check if it's your account if it's actually the right account maybe you have a multiple accounts then you check the type of order it's a buy order it's not a sell if you wanted to sell you could change it but we want a buy. Time in force, this is also kind of important. You want normally good till cancel. Day means the next day is gonna cancel if it's not executed. Good till cancel means simply that it's gonna stay here in the machine until it's executed or until you cancel it. I always put good till cancel. Next, we have the type of order. You can choose limit, you can choose mid price, market, uh, stop, anything you want. Normally, when I buy, I use limit, but this depends on you. Uh, if you don't know what limit, market, and all those orders mean, you should research it. We will not talk about it in this video. Then you need to choose the quantity, so the amount of stocks that you want to buy. Here, you can choose, I don't know, whatever you want. You can also choose the uh, USD value of stocks that you want to buy. 
but normally you want to choose the shares. So let's go with one share. Here, destination, you can choose many destinations for route to buy the company. Uh, what I choose normally is smart because this gives me the chance to have the best prices and the best liquidity. Then you choose the limit price. Here, because we chose limit, it shows us the limit price. If you chose another thing, it would, uh, it would show you, uh, I don't know, the stop price, for example, or something else. So let's just choose the limit price. Let's just go with, I don't know, 200, just to be sure that it's not gonna transmit, okay? Then at this point, we, wh why would, what do we want to add? We want to add the stop order and the take profit. So to do that, you just right click on the row of the order, of the buy order, and then you go attach. And then here you can choose whether to add the limit, so the take profit, the stop, so the stop loss, or both bracket orders. Normally I go with bracket orders because I want to choose, uh, because I want to add the take profit and the stop loss, both of them. So let's just choose bracket orders. As you can see here, it added uh, the order by itself. So it added the number of the order, the 10, the 10.1, the 10.2. Again, I have the account, I have the type of order, I have the time in force, which is gonna be the same as the first uh, order that we put, the buy order. We're gonna have the type, so the limit for the take profit and the stop for the stop loss. We're gonna have the quantity. Make sure the quantity is the same as the buy order. So one, one, and one in this case. Then you have the destination, keep it smart, I would recommend it. And then here you have the auxiliary price, so the stop loss price and the limit price, okay? So the limit for the buy order, it's already okay. We don't need to change it. We need to change the limit for the take profit. Let's say we want to take profit at 300. Then we want a stop loss at 150. One other thing to check, but this is gonna be automated, the, it's the OCA group. Make sure these two numbers are the same. They should be the same if you added the bracket orders uh, automatically. If you added the orders manually, you need to change these groups and you need to change it before you transmit it. So just change these groups and make them the same, okay? Normally what I do is adding the date and then the ticker. So for example, today is uh, the 24th of August, two 2020. So I would go 2020, 08, 24, and then AAPL for both of them. So I'm sure that there is gonna be only one OCA group with that name and the, the OCA group is the same. OCA group means simply one cancels another. So if I go with the profit, I will cancel the stop loss. If I go on the stop loss, I will cancel take profit, of course. So this is the order. Once we have the three orders that we want to transmit to the platform, we just right click on the ticker and we go check the orders. So we click chart, we click new chart. As you can see here, we will see the chart. You can uh, enlarge it, make it larger. And you can see here that we have the three orders. So we have the sell limit, the buy limit and the sell stop. You can uh, move these three lines to change the prices. So as you can see here, if you go carefully, you will manage to find this double arrow here. Once you find the double arrow, you just stay there and you click with the left uh, button of your mouse. You just click, keep the click, so keep, the, keep it pressed, and then you move the line up and down, up and down, wherever you want for this is to take profit. You can move the entry price, so here. By moving the entry price, you will move uh, everything else also, and then you can move the stop loss. Once you move these ones, the prices will be automatically updated. You can close the chart and the price will be automatically updated. Once you are okay with the prices, you looked at your orders, you are okay, just click transmit. At this point, you can review the uh, prices, you can review the, the whole thing. And then if you are okay with it, now it gives me warnings because these prices are not okay, uh, seeing the price of the stock, but Let's see if it will give me the chance to transmit it anyways. What I recommend you to check is these three. So the buy order, the sell, and the other sell, so the stop loss. Uh, check again the OCA groups here and here. Um, just check the prices and that's it. Just override and transmit, override and transmit, and override and transmit. These are for the three orders. For now, I will just go do not use. So now we transmitted the orders. As soon as the price hits 274 and 48 cents, my uh, stock will be bought 
and then as soon as it hits 468.25 it's gonna take the profit so sell the stock and take the profit or if it hits 196 and 96 cents it's gonna hit the stop loss and so sell it and give me the loss at this point uh, you can choose to cancel the order to cancel the order just click cancel. Order cancel after some time give it some time it will erase the rows and then you will just end up with the uh, stock row so let's just give it some time there we go the uh, orders were cancelled and now you're safe and sound you don't uh, have the orders anymore and you will not be executed okay so now we added the orders we uh, know how to add the orders we know how to make new investments but how to actually monitor your portfolio well to monitor your portfolio it's better to have this page here the portfolio page to add this uh, portfolio page you just right click on the plus button not left click right click and then click portfolio window you will be brought to this portfolio window you will add it if you didn't have it and then here you can see all your orders here and then you can also see all your financial instruments here that you invested in so i invested in aspu in cn and pass in qualis and in usd cash of course here you can see your orders also here you can customize the layout and add new things uh, just as before and you can see here uh, the information about your account so another thing that it's a little bit interesting before we close actually it's the titles as you can see here I have total and I have orders so I do two uh, things I put here my orders or the the yeah the, the orders that are not executed yet then when they are executed I just move them okay so you can move them like this by the way to cancel an uh, a row uh, I think I didn't say it but to cancel a row once you add it you just click delete that's it you click on the row and you click delete and that's it so very easy anyways if you want to add the titles you just go here and uh, what you do is right click uh, here and you go create group header you name the group header header and then it will give you the sum of information so of, of course the sum of information that you can actually sum up so as you can see here you uh, mainly what you want is the unrealized profit and loss so I have here total and I have the unrealized profit and loss on this page so I have one and two titles and this is all that I had to say. Now, I know I did it a little bit speedy because there is uh, a kind of a lot of things and I didn't want to do a half an hour video, but uh, I hope you managed to understand it. I know it's still a little bit hard and you will need to spend a little bit of your hours, maybe one, two or three hours. I spent quite a lot because there is not much information online, uh, especially when you go on complex type of orders. Let me know if you want me to talk about uh, some other types of things that you can do with the TWS but in any case um, this is how you mainly use the TWS especially if you're just a general investor okay you're not a day trader you're not uh, I don't know an option trader or a futures trader you just trade the stock market or the ETFs you want to chill uh, just like me maybe a swing trader or uh, I don't know a long-term investor this is how you use it. Remember, these are platforms that are made for professionals, therefore they are a little bit hard to use. But with a little bit of practice, you will 100% manage it. And I hope I helped you in that process. So this is all I had to say for the TWS and for interactive brokers platforms. Um, I hope again, you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, it helps a lot. Uh, if you didn't do so yet, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.